and welcome back to Bunter's Yard and uh, today either my hands have grown or this is an end scale uh, wagon which uh, which it is obviously um, so on one of the last videos there was a comment by a chap called Colin who said that um, he models in end scale and it'd be nice to see how sort of weathering techniques transfer from double O to, uh, to end scale so I thought we'd give it a little go. This is the first one that I've ever done and I'm going to do it um, sort of on camera. So good or bad, you're going to see the result. So we need a few different things. Um, we're going to need a very fine brush. This is a 3-0, I think. It's really tiny. The smallest one I've got anyway. It's got about three hairs on it. And we're going to use that for a little bit of detail. And um, my eyes are not as good as they used to be. So I've got these, which I've used for other things as well. Like Sort of clip on your head. Oh, uh, not sure how that got there. Um, and uh, we're going to need a new lens to uh, to get in closer. So we're going to swap the lens over. So, so here we are, just a little bit closer. So the first thing that I wanted to do was to um, just fill in some of that metal work. Now, I'm going to use grey on this one. Um, debate whether to have it in like a brown rusty colour or just plain black um, but I thought grey a little bit off um, so it's not sort of too bold we do want it to clash with some of the other bits we're going to do in a little bit so that bit's out of focus do uh, apologise again for that um, but I'll do the other end in a minute you'll see it closer but um, so this is a model uh, colour paint so I'm not mixing this down this is just sort of straight out of the bottle um, I prefer it that way. It's just uh, get a bit more, um, more control. I think when I'm painting at this sort of sort of scale. So you can see we just somewhere in the background there, just touching in some of the bars, those cross braces that go across there. We're not going to spend too much time on this. It is really a really small scale, and um, from any normal viewing distance, it's not going to be that obvious but we're going to do some other things later on and uh, sort of blur the edges as it were so anyway so here we go so just going to colour in this one um, maybe we're not going to do everything on this but definitely these corner um, supports and those uh, cross braces they're definitely going to get a bit of colour and maybe a little bit around the uh, around the door as well we don't need to do everything if you want to uh, happy days then uh, then go for it but we're going to leave it at uh, pretty much this. I'm just going to carry on and um, we'll pop back in a second. So our next thing is uh, just to paint in a couple of planks to make them look as if they've been replaced. You can choose whatever colour you want. We're just going for a red light, sort of grey-brown, sort of faded wood colour from the uh, AK range. Um, but you could do it in a, in a completely different colour to the to the wagon so it looks like it's been replaced and uh, painted with whatever they had laying around or just a faded version of the colour or whatever you choose to do. Uh, the top planks are the easiest one to paint in obviously because there's only about uh, one edge to cut along but we'll be right we just do one on the door. Uh, one there. If there's too much paint on your brush you really don't want too much paint on there just, just have a bit off on your finger or your thumb or whatever's closest. Our next stage on this uh, on this wagon is we're going to do a bit of dry brushing and this is just to sort of highlight the, the edges and bring up some of the rivet detail as well so this will make hopefully a whole lot of difference so this is a model air paint um, and we've brushed off as much as we can off the brush the brush is as dry as I can get it but as you see as you drag it across um, all the raised detail it will catch it and it gives it that um, Sort of worn look now we're using silver because it's just a nice contrast and it will stand out you don't need to you can use, just use a shade lighter than your um you know the color you're going for so it even lighter gray or maybe you would try rust whatever whatever suits um sort of your environment but i'm doing it this way just to uh just to make those highlights those edges pop just a little bit more and we do around the sides as well so the front and the back here you can see we painted these struts in as well, just very, very roughly. So 
So our next stage is um, we're going to do some oil uh, washes just to uh, just to bring out some of the uh, extra detail. So the uh, uh, the panel lines, you know, where the planks join and so on. So uh, gloss varnish, um, and we're going to let that dry fully. Now, if you use a gloss varnish, uh, the oils run better, so that's why you use a gloss. If you've got satin, if that's what you've got, then then by all means use that. Um, but a gloss is best. And then we're going to mix up a wash. Now this is an oil paint, um, and this is odorless thinners for oil paints. Make sure you use the right one. It doesn't work if you don't use the correct uh, thinners, but just an odorless thinner. And we're going to mix it up really, really um, weakly. And you kind of, as you do it, you get the idea of how, you know if it's thick or not. And again, we're using our tiny brush, and we're just going to drop a little bit on just around those um, gaps in between the planks and you can see that capillary action sort of drags it through. And this is a sort of minor detail but from a distance it will uh, will stand out and you'll see you know just much more detail um, because on a model that's of this size or even double O a shadow detail isn't the same isn't isn't as realistic is it as on, on the real thing because of the size of um, you know the the panel details and the light the shadow is never going to be as deep now you're inevitably going to get a few sort of uh, uh, splodges of the oils so if you just want to rub that off just use uh, your brush um, which is in um, the odorless thinners just just dry it off a little bit don't want it too wet and always just run over the place but just dry it back a little bit and then just wipe over the areas. If you don't want to do that, you can use a Q-tip, a cotton bud, uh, and that uh, that will help as well. And then the final thing, we just need to seal all of that in. So once it's dry, we are going to give it a blast with a satin varnish, ready for our next stage. So uh, now just to add some uh, some sort of track grime, sleeper grime colour. So we're using uh, US Earth Brown from Vallejo. Um, it's just the colour that I've got to hand and uh, it seems to work quite well. It's going really, really gently, pressure's really low on the airbrush. And we're just going to do the lower sort of portion and along the, um, along the, the frame and the chassis and so on just a little bit just on the side of the way just in the lower part of the wagon just to, to kind of blend the two parts together Otherwise it just looks like the uh, one color wagon is sitting on a different color um, chassis so while the wheels are off we're just going to paint those in as well just with the same uh, earth brown and then once it's assembled we can start with our weathering powders and this is just a selection of uh, different rust colors that I've got in the palette um, there is a set um, which I've got, I'll put a link to it down below. So we're using a small brush and just very gently using these uh, dark rust, we're using dark rust mainly here. And the reason we've sealed this um, after the oil layer is that if the oil was still wet, um, the, uh, the powders just make a horrible sort of clumpy muddy mess. So um, yeah, just make sure it's uh, it's fully dry, or well, like we've done here, we've sealed it with uh, with a varnish. So using a uh, fairly small brush for uh, air weathering, just so we can direct where the where the panels are going to be. Um, and really, it's up to you where you where you put these, I guess. So you know, under some underneath some of the metal work where it may have rusted and uh, run. Um, I'm going to use a slightly different colour here at the uh, at the end of the chassis rails. Uh, they seem to um, sort of pick up a, a bit of rust there. They get some moisture traps in the corners, and uh, they will start to rust. But you know, whatever you 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 feel is uh, is right for your model. So just be very uh, sort of delicate with the amount of. Um, powder that you use because uh, um, you don't want it too too thick and having too obvious. We're trying to be trying to be subtle, which is really not like me. Now the inside of this, um, we haven't done much to. We've uh, painted it with uh, 
with the earth brown uh, just very gently just very lightly inside and then we're just going to give it some uh, some selection of powders from the palette no uh, no specific colors this is uh, like an earth brown and then we've got some chrome oxide green and a little bit of um, it grew or something like that so as an added bonus on this particular build we're adding in um, these are uh, a barrel load so this is a resin printed uh, load which we make here at um, Bun Yard and this one is a particular size for um, to fit that wagon it's the it's to fit the graphar um, wagon but we can make them different size if you want any of these just give us a message on here on eBay and uh, we can print them to whatever sort of size that you want um, if you do using different brands uh, Graham Farish and that sort of thing they're gonna be sort of different sizes to these but just let me know and we can make them anyway so um, we normally print these in black now but this is an older one which is in grey so we're going to give this a coat of black primer now I like to do most things in black anyway one of the reasons is especially on a smaller item that when we then come to uh, paint it afterwards if we get any misses um, it's going to be uh, it can be black and then it will just look like um, sort of shadow so that's the reason for doing this anyway and we're going to paint this from uh, sort of top down so this adds a bit of a sort of shade towards the lower parts of the barrels it's not going to be fairly obvious um, and it's going to be hidden most of the time inside the wagon anyway um, then don't forget these are tiny these barrels are probably only I think they're maybe six millimeters high at the tallest point so um, so yeah we're really close up to these you may want to paint them with a brush if you are uh, if you're doing them yourself we're just going to really do this fairly fairly quickly just um, just to achieve an effect so we've painted it in um, middle grey which is um, just looks like a faded wood is from the faded wood kit and then we're going to add in this uh, light grey brown just for a bit of variation we're painting just a few of the barrels you know kind of randomly and then we're going to a couple of the tops as well and then just uh, maybe, maybe some banding or something on there just to uh, just to make it a little bit different once it's uh, finished and in situ it will hopefully look a bit better and then we're going to dry brush and that will catch like the bands on those uh, on the barrels. This is the, the earth brown that we used before for weathering the wagon. Now you could choose uh, you could easily use black or dark brown or a, a silver or um, even a bright orange rust if you choose for the. Uh, for the bands just to pick out the, the, the metal work if these were much bigger I'd probably be inclined to paint them anyway but um, not for end gauge I won't paint them in with a brush um, it's just easier to, to dry brush them in now we're going to see the top is the most uh, going to be mo the most sort of popular view so let's just quickly um, dry brush that in you can see the bands really popping out now which is uh, exactly what we're after and then our final uh, part is just to steal that in with the with the satin varnish again just to make it a bit more durable and then we can drop this load into our wagon once it's uh, once it's dry in nice and snuggly and that's it we're all done uh, so I hope that's been uh, of some use today uh, a bit of a venture into the unknown for uh, for me uh, doing an end scale but uh, all done job accomplished bye for now